Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over how specific cells in the retina capture visual images and then make them into more clear and more precise images for our brain to interpret. So before we get started we need to know a few things and the first thing is a receptive field is essentially a large group of photoreceptors that all send information to a particular ganglion cell. So it is basically a bunch of photoreceptors in sort of a bullseye shape that all funnel their information down to eventually one ganglion cell. So the bullseye or the center of the receptive field shown here is actually conveniently called the center while the outside, the blue of this target is conveniently called the surround because it surrounds the center. So in our receptive field we have a center and a surround. Now, in our previous videos, we talked about how there were other cells that reside in the inner nuclear layer of the retina. And these cells are called bipolar cells, horizontal cells, and amacrine cells. So if you have to remember it, remember ba ba ba, b h a b h a b h a, or b a h if you please. So if we recall that some of our bipolar cells are usually excitatory when activated and that other bipolar cells are usually inhibitory when activated, then we can start to develop the concept of on and off centers. So what do we mean by on and off centers? Well, on and off centers are like little pieces of information that help us detect exactly where light is and where light isn't. So basically, imagine a big rod photoreceptor that is sticking out in the retina. So let's imagine that this rod is completely in the dark. There are no photons of light to be found. This means that our photoreceptor rod cell, remember I've just taken one of these and I've put it down here. This means that our photoreceptor rod cell is going to be depolarized by our dark sodium channels just like we talked about. Remember, don't get it twisted. When a photoreceptor is in the dark, it's actually depolarized, releasing neurotransmitters. When it's in the light, it is actually hyperpolarized and not, re and not releasing neurotransmitters. So that's a common misconception. That's what people get confused on, so don't get it twisted. So the rod photoreceptor will continue to release glutamate because it's in the dark onto our two types of bipolar cells. So when the glutamate is showered on these two types of bipolar cells, the off center bipolar cell will actually become activated and will tell the ganglion cell down here that this particular rod is in the dark. That is what it is whispering to the ganglion cell. Now, if we happen to shine some light onto this rod, we know that it is going to become hyperpolarized and the photoreceptor, you can see it kind of goes to sleep. It is not going to release glutamate. So this absence of glutamate or this cessation of glutamate release will actually activate our on center bipolar cells which will tell the ganglion cell down here that this particular rod is now in the light. This bipolar cell is saying, hey, this particular photoreceptor is in the light. Now, there's something very interesting that happens uh, that we talked about um, in, our, in our previous video shortly or briefly, that there are bi horizontal cells that also influence our photoreceptors. So these horizontal cells are like little amplifiers and they make the information that the ganglion cell receives just a little bit more precise. So let's take our example of the rod photoreceptor that is in the light. It will become hyperpolarized. We already know this. Photoreceptors in the light become hyperpolarized and we know that this photoreceptor is going to go to sleep and it's not going to release glutamate. You can see there's no glutamate release here. Well, we see here that this photoreceptor is connected to a horizontal cell. Now, this photoreceptor here is what is going to activate our horizontal cell, and this one happens to be in the dark. So we know that cells in the dark are actually depolarized, and they release glutamate. So this glutamate activates the horizontal cell and here is the catch. Here's the one thing you need to know about horizontal cells is that they are inhibitory. So this means that when our horizontal cell is activated by the photoreceptor in the dark that's releasing glutamate, 
the horizontal cell will release its own neurotransmitter called glycine. And if we remember from our previous videos, glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So this horizontal cell will release its inhibitory neurotransmitter onto the photoreceptor in the light, and this will cause a further restriction of glutamate release. So simply put, the horizontal cells help to augment or make more severe or more precise the effects of the photoreceptor. So for example, if our photoreceptor is in the dark, it will release glutamate. And the horizontal cell in the light will not do anything to stop it. So essentially, the floodgates are open and there's nothing that the horizontal cell is doing to stop it. Now, conversely, or on the other hand, if our photoreceptor is in the light, it will not release as much glutamate. We already know this. And the horizontal cell that is connected to the dark surround will actually further inhibit the photoreceptor so that less glutamate is released. So this glutamate is already less than usual and the horizontal cell helps to put a further kink in the hose. So we can see that not a lot of glutamate is being released here and the horizontal cell tightens it up even further. So the result is that the ganglion cell down here is going to receive a piece of information about the location of light in the center of the receptive field and the surround of the receptive field. And it's going to be made more precise by the horizontal cell. So as you can imagine, things get a little bit more complex when both the center and the surround are in the light or if the center and the surround are in the dark. But in this video, let's just try to gather a basic understanding of how an on and off center works. So let's see how it looks when we put this all together with all the information about the eye, about the retina that we've learned so far. So let's say that we have a tiny flashlight and we are shining it in the center, in the center of this receptive field. And this means because it's such a tiny flashlight that there is a dark surround. So we're talking about this. I'm shining a flashlight in the center, but the surround is dark. Flashlight in the center, but the surround is dark. So because light is shining on the photoreceptors in the center, we know that they are going to become hyperpolarized. We know that this means that they're going to release less glutamate on our bipolar cells. So the on center bipolar cell is activated when it doesn't have glutamate. And it's going to start sending messages to the ganglion cell shown here in pink that says, hey, it's bright right here. Now, at the same time, the photoreceptors in the surround, in the dark surround, are going to become depolarized. So this means that these photoreceptors are going to release more glutamate onto our bipolar and our horizontal cells. So we know that the off-center bipolar cells are activated by glutamate, as shown here. So basically what these bipolar cells are saying to the ganglion cell is, hey, we are in the dark. So we must not forget about our essential, our augmenters, uh, our horizontal cells. So the horizontal cells are connected, in this case, to the surround. And we know that the surround is dark. So because we know that the photoreceptors are in the dark, they're depolarized. I can't stress this enough. The photoreceptors are dark, so they're depolarized. This means that they're releasing glutamate. Well, this glutamate activated our horizontal cell, which we know is inhibitory. So we know that our inhibitory horizontal cell is going to release glycine, which is, which is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, onto our photoreceptor right here. It's going to have less glutamate release. This horizontal cell is going to inhibit this cell, so even less glutamate release is going to occur. So what is the end result? Well, we know that the light in the center has made this particular photoreceptor uh, hyperpolarized, so it is asleep, it's not doing anything, it's not releasing glutamate. And this has activated our on bipolar cells, which communicate with our ganglion cell that, hey, this field is bright right here. Well, what happens when we have our 
photoreceptor that's in the dark. It's in the dark surround. We know that photoreceptors in the dark are depolarized. So remember, we have those dark sodium current channels and they're, they're sucking up the sodium and they're becoming depolarized. They are releasing glutamate. So this glutamate has actually activated our off bipolar cells and these off bipolar cells whisper to the ganglion cells, hey, it's dark right here. And then lastly, to sort of enhance the message, to make it more precise, we know that the horizontal cell in this circumstance has been activated by glutamate and it has released its inhibitory neurotransmitter onto our photoreceptor that is in the light. So this cell was already not releasing a lot of glutamate. This glycine that's released by the horizontal cell has just made that even more impossible. So really, there's probably next to no glutamate that is being released because of the effects of the horizontal cell. So what is the end result? Well, our ganglion cells down here, they've received pieces of very precise information about exactly where the light is in the center and where it isn't in the surround. And what are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna use their axons, they're gonna be bundled together in the optic nerve, and that is going to be transmitted through our brain, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next video. So I hope that you guys understand just a little bit more about on and off centers and all this cascade of actions that happens when we have light and dark in our receptive fields. And always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today, and remember to like and subscribe for more content.